Hello again, I'm Harry Riley. Welcome to Harry's Tales. This is called The Gypsy's Curse by Harry Riley. This story is fiction and resemblance to anyone living or dead is coincidental. Major Rupert Gorsmith was widely known and reviled in the small town of Ambalon Dexter as Major Truffles. It was what used to be known as a nosy parker, someone who can't keep his nostrils out of other folks' business. The police would dread his weekly visits to their station as he called to complain about anything and everything. It was a small build and had a stiff ramrod back. Now, in his later years, he carried a stick and was always accompanied by a small terrier. It was a familiar figure in his pork pie hat, wax jacket and cord trousers as he self-importantly hissed and snorted his way through the crowded streets finding fault with motorists and pedestrians alike. A well-meaning greeting of how do you do or good day to you sir would be answered by a curled lip and a fierce oath. His nickname of Major Truffles came about because of his hobby of digging the bottoms. That's a wide acreage of antique woodland adjacent to the town. For truffles. He'd dig for truffles. He trained his dog Rufus to smell them out and he could regularly be seen by the local ramblers and bird watchers as he scrambled about on hands and knees hunting for the prized delicacy. He might have carried on being a thorn in the side of his community for many more years but for the day he met the gypsies in the wood. This was to change his life in more ways than one. He had set out early that morning for the woodland armed with his stick and basket and accompanied by his faithful a much abused dog. On entering the forest he found a likely spot and quickly dug up several big truffles which he placed in his basket and then he gave a mighty sniff and muttered to himself that some careless blighter had lit a fire. He would investigate immediately. He followed his nose and shortly came to an open plateau where a strange gypsy encampment was located just off the beaten track. Indignantly waving his stick he stormed up to the small group of men, women and children, quietly sitting around the fire. The visitors had several old-fashioned gaily coloured caravans pulled by horses, and these animals were tied up, grazing the long grasses at the outer perimeter of the clearing. Uh, just what do you think you're doing here? Come on, be off with you, before I get the police to evict you, damn tinkers. He thrust his feet into the fire and stamped furiously, scattering the ashes in a cloud of dust and smoke that had the gypsy folk coughing and, and choking in pain. We don't want your kind here, with your thieving ways. He, he called for his dog and bree breezily carried on his way, knowing they would have to obey his command or face dire consequences. That'll teach him, he grumbled to the terrier, who gazed up at him fearfully. The next day he answered a timid knock on his front door to find an old gypsy woman standing there, with a nervous smile on her wrinkled face and a basket of clothes pegs cradled in her arms. She spoke in words he couldn't understand but her body language told him she wanted him to buy her wares. Are you people still here after I told you to clear off? Go on, be gone, before I set the law on you. He'd come to the door with his stick in his hand and now he attacked the defenceless woman, knocking her basket to the ground and scattering wooden pegs all over the garden. As she bent, she bent painfully to collect them up, he attacked her rear and sent her face down in the dirt. And with that he went back inside the house, slamming the door behind him. An adult male passerby opened the small picket gate and rushed to her assistance, helping her to her feet and replacing the basket into her gnarled old fingers. She thanked him and they both went about their separate ways. The Major never gave his own wilful actions a second thought until he awoke the following morning to find a visitor had called in the night and had posted a folded sheet of grubby notepaper through his letterbox. He went outside and noticed a crude drawing of a pig's head that had been chalked on the red brick wall of his cottage, just to the side of his doorway. Opening the notepaper, he tried to decipher the strange words, but they made no sense, and so he pulled on his coat and hat and set off. On foot to his local police station, 
The desk sergeant covered his face with his hand in a resigned gesture and studied the Major's message. Sorry, I can't help you, but I suggest you ask at the library. They, they might know what it means. At the library, he went straight up to the head librarian, who was deep in conversation with the customer, and rudely interrupted their talk, insisting on an interview. The librarian was familiar with this troublemaker and thought it wisest to comply. He stood in the note for a few moments before giving his faltering interpretation. Ah oh, yes, what we have here is old Roma. Anglo-Roma, wait a minute. Yes, this looks like water, brasky, frog or toad and beardy, beady eye, a bull over, a bacon pig. I can't get it, yes. He glanced up sharply, sharply at the major and narrowed his eyes. By God, sir, you've really upset someone here. This is some sort of gypsy curse. And broadly translated, it reads, as a rhyme. Wart of toad and beady eye, a pig you'll lie before you die. Rupert Gorsmith gave him a derisive sneer of contempt and threw the paper down on the floor as he turned about and kicked his way out through the swing door. Less than three days later, his features started to undergo a strange transformation. He first noticed a problem as he shaved. The razor blade kept catching on a sore spot that developed into a wart and then another and another. And then his eyes seemed to retreat into his head until he had to screw up his face to see. His ears became much more pointed and his nose started to resemble a, f a flat snout. His skin shone bright pink and he was afraid to go outside for he now resembled a pig. Rufus began to bark at him and it was all he could do not to climb back in bed and pull the cover up hiding his strange countenance. He started going out in the dark and within a week Rufus was picked up by dog wardens for straying in the high street. The Major was not at home and a search was launched that resulted in a body being found at the base of a big oak in the Bottoms woodland. The clothes were that of the Major but the head was a bloated pig with a large truffle in its mouth. The gypsy woman's curse had ruthlessly exposed his true nature to the world. End.